All right, gives me great pleasure to bring in Carrie Lake, Arizona Republican gubernatorial candidate. Carrie, thank you ever so much for this. Appreciate it. And I'm reading, Carrie, that there's over 600,000 uncounted ballots left in Arizona, the vast majority of which probably go Republican. What can you tell us about this little scam? Uh, well, they count ballots real slow here in Arizona. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to fix that. Yes, we feel very confident. We know we're going to win. And uh, the question is, how big will the margin be, the, the victory margin? You know, of those, I'm looking at my, my sheet here with all of the, the data, and over 600,000 left to be counted. And of those, close to 400,000 are mail-in ballots that people showed up at the polls on Election Day to hand deliver. And we believe, and, and pretty much everyone believes, that if you did that, you don't trust the, the drop boxes and you don't trust putting it in the mailbox. And that's why you did it. And those are going to be a reliable, strong Republican vote. The question is, do we get 52 or 53 percent of that? Or are we going to get closer to 80 percent? Anything's possible with that vote. And we are going to win no matter what. The question is, will Blake win? And I think that there's a real good chance that Blake could win. Now, the election, the ballots they're counting right now, Larry, are ballots that were mailed in and arrived before Election Day. They're tending to go a little bit more Democrat or fall 50-50. So we're waiting for this big tranche of votes to be counted, and they are dragging their feet to count them in Maricopa County. Yeah, so uh, experienced broadcaster that you are, you sort of preempted my next question. How is Blake going to do, Blake Masters going to do? In effect, can this pull him over, do you think? is He's still in play, isn't he, really? He's still in play. Yes. He's still in play. Now, we're expecting some numbers to be released tonight, and they could go either way. We could see a boost, or we could go down a little. And I am I'm hoping that the propagandists out there and the fake news don't try to call it, because we need to wait until these this big tranche of numbers is released in the coming days. Mm. And so I think he could see his numbers go down a little bit, but I believe he will go way up. And there's a good shot he could win this. So mm. I don't think they'll call it. Hopefully they'll be responsible. Two house sweep is still possible. Let's just uh, leave, for a moment leave Arizona and look at nationwide. Um, it wasn't as strong as a lot of us hoped it would be. I call it a platoon, not a cavalry. But platoons can be very strong themselves, you know. And if you get two houses, it will be an even bigger platoon. But here's the point I want to make. I'm reading the newspapers, conservative newspapers today. In the Wall Street Journal, the editorial side of the Wall Street Journal, there were no fewer than five anti-Trump hammering Donald Trump, two editorials and three opinion papers. And in the New York Post, which is editorially quite conservative, as you may know, and is widely read, um, the front cover was pounding on Trump, the editorials were pounding on Trump. Carrie, like, why is this? I mean, I don't, this was, none of these guys, I had all these Senate people on, including, including uh, uh, Blake, several times, by the way. The guy got better every time he was on. They weren't talking about the election <laughs> results of 2020. They are talking about inflation. They are talking about crime. They are talking about the border. They are talking about drugs. That's right. My point is, why are people blaming Donald Trump? And by the by, Trump won many of these races, and he may win a couple more. Pennsylvania didn't work, but a lot of others did. I don't get this, Carrie. You see what I'm saying? Why is well, everyone yeah. just slamming Donald Trump uh, yesterday and especially it, today? It's, it's hard to believe, but there are still Republicans who don't want him to run again. I would be, I would be thrilled if he runs again. I hope he does. We need him to get in and clean up what Joe Biden has screwed up. But nobody wanted to talk about the 2020 election because the fake news made us feel terrible if we did talk about it. I can tell you, Larry, that I was on the campaign trail for 525 days. That's what Arizonans are talking about. And look what happens when we don't address problems with our elections. We end up with another election that's not run well. Well, so we're going to deal with that. I think they want to have a little war within the Republican Party. I don't think that's smart. We've got great candidates. Ron DeSantis is great. Christy Noem is great. We've got a strong Governor Yunkin. We're going to have a strong Kerry Lake. And we have an incredible President Donald J. Trump. I hope he runs again. There's a lot of years for everybody else to run. We'll see what happens. But I'm not going to bash President Trump. He was one of the greatest presidents we ever saw. And I think um, 
maybe they're hoping he doesn't run and they want to see somebody else run. I, I'm a big believer that President Trump is the leader we need right now. Well, it's just an odd story. Um, as you know, I worked for Trump for three years. I mean, it's just a very odd story. Nobody wants to mention his accomplishments his achievements, how well right. he managed the economy, how well he managed energy independence and foreign policy. They're all throwing that out the window. And, okay, Pennsylvania was not the best moment. I get that. Trump himself gets that. But I'm just saying, why yeah. all of a sudden is everyone pounding the poor guy to death? I mean, he did a lot of good things for this I country. Think I'll tell you why they're doing it, because he's probably going to announce he's running, and some people don't want him to, but I don't think that's going to stop him. He did amazing things for this country. His America First policies had every group of citizens doing better. Didn't matter what your skin mm -hmm. color was, didn't mm -hmm. matter what your zip code was. We were riding high under President Trump. The country was in better shape. He, he ended wars. He didn't start any wars. He had brought peace to the Middle East. Uh, our 401ks were looking pretty good. And if you look at your retirement savings right now, I talked to many retirees who said, Carrie, I just retired. I might have to go back to work. My retirement savings has shriveled up. It's dried up under Joe Biden. And we need somebody to get us out of the jam we're in. President Trump did it once before. I think he would be a great candidate. We'll see what happens in 24. Mm. Who knows? But all I know is we need a solid person to take the place of Joe Biden because we can't handle much more of that guy. Anyway, Carrie Lake, thank you for coming on. Good luck in the next couple of days. You're going to make it. I know you will. I have nothing but confidence. I hope Blake Masters comes with you. Anyway, thanks much.